Hi friends. Ma, I just realized I forgot to bring my makeup today. I got to work a little bit early. I'm quickly watching this video on implantation bleeding. Um, before I start my day, I have to start in like three minutes. But um, the last time we talked, I said I might take a pregnancy test. Um, I'm supposed to get my period in two days. It's October 11th. My period's supposed to start my birthday, October 13th. And I woke up this morning and there was like brown blood once I wiped and I was really disappointed because I was like no like is my period starting um because sometimes the day before my period I'll get a little bit of spotting but I can't remember if it's brown or not I feel like it's like a reddish brown usually so now I'm just looking up a few things about implantation bleeding because maybe that's a possibility I guess I'll know for sure in a few days but, man, I just don't want to set myself up to, like, continue to be really hopeful. The, I mean, the symptom I've really just had is, like, tender, tender breast, And obviously what I mentioned earlier, which was the cold sweats for one night and that dream that I had. So, we will see what happens over the next couple days, but this girl was so kind and made a video. I'm literally looking up pictures of implantation bleeding. I found this one chart that it that they say implanta implantation bleeding will be light pink or brown, and it'll last like one to two days where your period will be like red. So if it stays this brown color, then... I feel like that would be a good sign, but if it starts getting heavier and starts turning red, then that would definitely be my period. And usually if I'm spotting, I'll get like start my heavy period the next day. So I don't know. We'll, I'll probably know in the next day if I should even take a test or not, but that's the update. <laughs> oh. Thank you. I'm gonna come on my lap. What are you doing? Well, hello guys. It has been a week since you last saw me. Um, I think the last thing you saw was me watching the videos on implantation bleeding. Well, the day after that I ended up getting my period. And that was the day before my birthday, so a day before it was supposed to come. And to be honest, I was quite sad and disappointed almost all day. I woke up, went to the bathroom, saw that I had gotten my period, and started crying on the toilet. <laughs> Which, I feel like I have done too much crying on a toilet in my lifetime. But, yeah, I was definitely sad and disappointed. Um, mostly because I let my expectations, like, and I really was hoping and really thought that it was, I was going to be pregnant. And I had, like, written this nice little story <laughs> on, like, how cool it would be and, like, how the timing would be amazing because then I go get to go like tell my parents and family while we're at home. But yeah, it didn't work out that way. Pants. My big lap dog. Okay, bud. What's the dealio? We need to make a decision. You wanna get off? Go, 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 go. Okay. Anyway, but yeah, that is kind of what happened. And then the next day was my birthday and I felt a lot better the day after. So I just, I'm glad that my period came a day early because then I didn't have to get that news on my birthday and I just feel like throughout it all I can still see God, you know, God there for me. Like 
just making sure I didn't find that out on my birthday. It's like, I don't know, there's just like so much thoughtfulness in it all that I see and appreciate. Um, and I think holding on to, to that because obviously I don't want to build any resentment or bitterness for my situation. And yeah, I know we haven't really been trying that long. You know, some people try for years without even getting a positive pregnancy test. So I'm really grateful that we at least had a positive pregnancy test, even though it did end in a miscarriage. Obviously, there are other people in worse situations, and it's so... I think a lot of times we try to invalidate people's feelings because someone else has it worse. And... I acknowledge that other people have it worse than me, but that doesn't mean I shouldn't feel what I feel for my circumstance. Like, I can't. It's like, do we just want everyone to go through the worst of the worst in order to truly empathize with others? Like, would that really make us happy? Is that really the point we're trying to make when we compare each other and like who has things worse I don't know anyway that's a whole side tangent but I wanted to give you guys another update because I actually got to work with modern fertility on like an Instagram collaboration and so with that I got to test my fertility hormones so I thought this was like such a cool way to just learn more and just like be more informed I think there's a lot of power in being informed so I got my test results back and almost everything was normal aside from my egg count which I think is like my um what is that called my reserve and so basically they say I have less eggs than most women my age well like 90 almost 99% of women my age have more, have more eggs than me, I guess, because I was in like the 1.6%. So that is <laughs> something I'm now aware of. And also my thyroid levels were a bit high. Everything else was normal, but I know thyroid, like your thyroid health, health, that can be totally like focus on and healed and then I basically sent all these results to my midwife who's also a doctor and just like let her know like here are my results what do you think and she said and I was under the impression that my you know reserve of eggs like that could not go up and that would not get better that was just something I was born with which I think is what they say but she, um, it's just so good having a midwife who's a believer, a doctor who believes in like the healing powers of Jesus. But here's the beginning of her message. Without a shadow of a doubt, your ovarian reserve is absolutely something you can do something about because I've seen that number change. Believe it or not, you can change your anti-malarian hormone. You can change your, um, your thyroid, absolutely. It is something so within your body's innate ability and all we need to do is assist it to do that. And I've seen it happen over and over again with many different women. You have an insane strategy over them and that you are with the Lord you are young and you are made to heal and you're so healable this is such a so yeah that was the beginning of her message which I just love that like I can't imagine going to another doctor who didn't have that kind of faith and like see those kinds of testimonies and for them to just tell me it's hopeless and that will never change so that gave me a lot of encouragement and I hope it encourages one of you to know that 
you know, even being educated on your fertility, it can be nerve wracking and it may cause anxiety. Um, but literally the one number that I thought I could do nothing about and they tell you, you can't do really anything about like my doctor is encouraging me and saying like through prayer and like, that's another thing. It gives us like really strong points to pray on, like lowering my thyroid, increasing my ovarian reserve. Like those are two now very specific prayers that I can be praying and Kyle can be praying. So, um, right now I'm kind of just deciding, she said she, we could set up a consultation and then we would do probably a follow-up or maybe two follow, 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 I'm stuttering. So she said we could set up a consultation and she would go over on ways to like heal those levels. Um, and then we'd probably do like a couple follow-ups after that. I think right now I've kind of just decided maybe to wait till the new year to to do that and focus on that enjoy the holidays and enjoy all the time we're traveling and just not really focus so much on that so i think we'll just continue on trying to conceive and yeah then in the new year because we're, we're planning to move in either december or january um so me and kyle kind of were talking about like maybe it would kind of be best for us to be like settled into a new place um, instead of getting pregnant in the midst of a move and huge transition again. <laughs> so, um, obviously that's like what we're discussing for our family, but ultimately it's God's, God's will and God's timing. So we're just letting go of expectations, keep trying, but yeah, we're not super attached. I think I just really got attached to the idea of finding out on my birthday, but I'm hoping moving forward now I won't be as attached to um getting pregnant right now and just be able to really enjoy life, continue to pursue healthiness. I'm about to go to Pilates class, which I need to leave for like right now. <laughs> um so yeah, that is the update. I'm also like debating whether to start posting these videos or not um I think if we I really wanted to kind of release this series after we were pregnant like a second time and like everything was healthy and we were you know out of the first trimester that was my plan it was once we we're pregnant again and out of the first trimester and everything was safe and we got to tell our family then we would announce that we were pregnant and then from there I would start releasing these episodes in chronological order so people could see the whole journey of it but as time goes on it's like I kind of want to share it I don't know you know I don't know how long that's going to take and I know these videos could you know they they have been really healing for me and they could be really healing for other women who are going through this and just bring like a lot more awareness to the ups and downs of trying to get pregnant. So, mm, yeah, I'm kind of toying with the idea of in the new year, if we still, you know, aren't pregnant, then maybe just to start releasing episodes and then people would kind of just be caught up with everything. I just, I really have to think through that and pray about it to figure out if I want people to know in real time what we're going through or not. That's like the big question. Obviously my friends and family know, but nobody really on YouTube knows. So I'll have to really think about that because once I do it, there's no going back. And I don't know if informing people on their journey. I know like people, I think, I know, I feel like there would be so much prayer that I would appreciate, but then I think there's so many opinions and judgments that I wouldn't appreciate. So it's just, I have to know that both will come. Maybe I can ask somebody else who's kind of like shared about their miscarriages or um, journey getting pregnant and see 
if it was a positive experience for them. But anyway, that is the update. I'm going to go to this workout class and get ready. <laughs>